Guys, I found out a secret about Fly Lady and about how she came up with her cleaning system and more importantly the secret behind her control journal and I'm going to tell you about it in just a moment. But first, if we haven't met yet, my name is Issa and I make intentional homemaking videos with my wife Blaze. And we have been doing the Fly Lady system for a little while now. We've tried out a few ways of doing her control system or her control journal system, which is the way that she keeps track of her home, her life, her everything. It's very similar to other planning systems and other types of planners and stuff, but it also helps you keep on track with her very, very comprehensive cleaning system. We do have a couple of videos on how we set up our different control journals and how we made spreads and that sort of thing. So if you are looking for tips and tricks on that, then we do have videos for you to check out on the channel. But anyway, back to the point, or back to the secret. And I guess it isn't really a deep, dark secret, but it did answer a question that I had about the fly lady. And that's, where did she come up with this cleaning system? She appears to have been someone like me who just struggled with keeping on top of things. So how did she go from struggling to this system? Now I am the type of person that once a thought or question has entered my head, I cannot get rid of it until I know the answer. So I did some digging and luckily I did not have to dig too far until I found this book, this book. So this is the Sidetrack Home Executive System by Pam and Peggy. They are a couple of sisters who also struggled and came up with this. And this system is really old, but it's even older than me. So this book in particular was first published in 1979, although this is a revised one that was published in 2001. And this is where I found my answers. And I learned that this is what the fly lady built her system on. She even gets a mention in it, which I guess means that it's not really much of a secret at all. It's more a thing that people just don't know. But it's still interesting because it means that something I suspected is true. And that's that nobody really knows how to clean and tidy until they're taught. We all have to learn it somewhere, and for many of us that is likely our parents or whoever brought us up. But not everybody learned and picked these skills up like that. But we all have to start somewhere, and that actually applies to every cleaning out expert out there. We all had to learn from somewhere. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with this. There is no problem that the fly lady had to learn from these guys before she could create her own system. I think that's how we all learn. We grab tips and tricks from various places and we end up with our own system that works for us. But I was curious about how much inspiration Fly Lady drew from Pam and Peggy and how Fly Lady like their system actually was. And that's because I have found that the Fly Lady system actually really does work pretty well for me and I was curious about whether this system would too. Now I am not going to go into all of the similarities and differences between the systems in detail in this video. I can in future if you're interested and want to see videos on that but I'm not even entirely sure right now if I'm going to give this system a go. But there is one thing in this book that really jumped out as me as the possible way to solve one really big aspect I have with this system. And no, it's not the shoe thing that Fly Lady insists is so important. These guys think that's important too. The thing that really jumped out of me as possibly life-changing is how Pam and Peggy organise their home and their life and it might revolutionise the Fly Lady control journal for me. In fact, I think it's probably the very basis of the control journal. What's in this book is what inspired the Fly Lady Control Journal. So, what is this new magical system? Well, it's a little bit old school, but I can actually see it working really well. Especially in this house where we like to have a central place to keep our to-do and chore lists so that both of us can access it. And that's an index card system. And I am suddenly really, really aware that for anyone under the age of 30, I may have just uttered words that make no sense whatsoever. I think the last time I saw one of these was in the early 2000s and I considered it really old fashioned even then. But an index card box is like this and it's just a way of holding information. Uh, you write things on these cards and you file them in the box in, under dividers. I've mainly seen these things used as places to keep like address books and stuff like that and I've only really used them in offices. It didn't actually occur to me that you could use them for any other ideas or types of information or that you could even use them as a planning system. But this is how Pam and Peggy organised their home and their life and I want to try it too. There are a few reasons I want to try this way of planning. Partly it's that I just love new planning systems but the biggest reason is that the Fly Lady Control Journal didn't actually work very well for me. I mean, I can see that it is a good system and I can see that it would work for a lot of people, but I am one of those people that if I can't see something, I kind of forget it exists. So when it comes to things like planners and to-do lists, 
If I can't see it and it's not like really in my face, I just forget it exists. And I have never quite got into the habit of using my planner daily. We did actually create ourselves a home life planner for this year, which is a planner for the whole house. And it works brilliantly for a reference place for long term information. But on a day to day basis for things like the fly lady system, we stopped using it a while back. And that's because I have a personal planner. So my day to day planning tends to go in there and I don't like doing that twice. So this does cause us some problems because the point of recording all of this information in our home life planner was so that Blaze could use it too and the information just isn't there for her right now. So I actually have high hopes that using an index card box will help with this because it will be visible. It's the information just in one place and we don't have to keep writing the information out day after day. Once you've completed a task you just move it to the next day in the index box where you want to do that task again. But I am getting a bit ahead of myself now because I haven't actually explained what the system is. So a very brief overview is that the sidetracked home executive method is a cleaning and home organisation system built upon the idea of maximising your efficiency in the home and it focuses on helping you stay organised and on top of things. It was created by a couple of sisters who used to call themselves the Slob Sisters because of how tough they found it to know how to keep their homes tidy and clean. This is a system that they developed together over time after admitting to each other just how bad they were at this homemaking thing. The system is built upon coming up with a series of rotating tasks that need to be completed daily, weekly or monthly, or more sporadically than that, and then categorising those tasks and organising them into an easy to manage way that is also easy to access. And this is where the index box comes into it. The index card box is the backbone to the entire system, and I'm going to go and make my own box right now. So I bought my box and cards from Amazon and I just got a standard 3x5 box. I went for something plain and cheap because right now I have absolutely no idea if this is going to work or not. I'm not going to be making it too pretty right now either. I'm going to be purely functional for the time being. If this works out then I'll redo this so it's a little prettier. But right now I just got a multi-pack of coloured index cards and a pack of white cards. The book recommends you get a whole bunch of dividers, um, which is a set of blank dividers, a set of monthly dividers, and a set of dividers numbered 1 through 31, and then also a set of A to Z dividers too. So I didn't buy the dividers because this is where the price really started to increase, and I'd set myself a budget of less than £20 for this system. So instead of dividers, I bought a pack of these divider tab stickers, and I just plan to use index cards and put a sticker on it so that it turns into a divider. So that was all the supplies I needed and it's time to get the system ready. The book has a handy list of chores by room in the back so I photocopied those pages in the book so that I could highlight and write all over the pages. This is actually the first thing to do when setting up this system. Decide on the chores you want to include, how long those chores will take, how often you want to do them and then whether or not it's a mini task or not. A mini task is a task that takes less than 10 minutes and you can either fit it in anywhere or do it while you're doing other things like watching TV or talking on the phone. And then the last thing you need to work out is if it's a task you want to delegate or not. While going through these task lists, it became very clear that this is definitely a book and a system of its time because many of these tasks are ones that I just don't need to do anymore. Although some houses may need things like polishing and waxing the floor, especially if you have original wooden floors, but my synthetic floors definitely don't need this level of work. But that aside, I just worked through the list and then added my own estimates and I also added in any extra tasks that weren't included in the book. After doing that, it's just time to prep the cards and dividers. I made my dividers just using the index cards and the divider stickers that I bought and then I just um, used stickers that I already had to put the title or section on the divider tab. I didn't include the A to Z because that's used for an address book and I've not needed a printed address book in decades now. So I made my 1 to 31 dividers which is for the days of the month and then I made my monthly dividers and then I made a set of four blank dividers. Next I made my basic weekly plan card and this is very similar to the Fly Lady daily focus routine where you pick a day to focus on one type of activity. So I am very familiar with this idea already, but at this point I did have to make a decision. Fly Lady splits her routines into small chunks daily for cleaning and organisation tasks and this book does things slightly differently and it splits things into daily tasks and bigger tasks and these bigger tasks get split between two cleaning days. One is a heavy cleaning day and the other is a light cleaning day. And I am actually wondering if doing things this way might work better for me because I have a very unfocused mind and I do struggle with the little bit of cleaning each day mindset. I prefer to get into the zone and clean a whole room in one go and then have the next three days off from cleaning, but everyone is different. 
So I am going to try this method instead and I've set up my week to look like this. Monday is a free day which is the day I get to do whatever I feel like. Tuesday is a heavy cleaning day, mostly because Blaze is usually out of the house on this day which makes it easier to clean. Wednesday is going to be my planning day. Thursday is errand day. Friday is grocery day. And I don't tend to clean at the weekend so I didn't even add those to the card. So we are getting there but now it is time to fill out the cards. And the idea for this is that they're kind of colour coded. Yellow cards are for daily or every other day tasks. Blue are for weekly tasks. Pink is for personal tasks or for errand type tasks or things that take you outside of the house. And then the white cards are for monthly or seasonal or yearly tasks. So to fill out a card you write the task out in the middle of the card and only write one task per card. You need a separate card for every single task. So if this is a task you delegate, you can add extra information on how to do the task, where the equipment is and that sort of thing. And then you write the frequency of the task in the top left hand corner of the card. So either weekly or daily or however often you want to do the task. And then on the top right hand corner you write out the length of time that the task takes and whether or not it's a mini task. Next, it's the monthly and every other month seasonal and yearly tasks. You fill out the cards in the same way with the same information, but you add a couple of extra things. These are the last date you completed the task, and you write skipped along the bottom with a couple of squares next to it to act as tick boxes. This is so that you can write on the card in pencil the last time you did the task, and you can tick a box if you skip it. We all have those times where we don't have time for a task or can't do it for whatever reason, and this enables us to skip it and keep up with how badly the task needs doing. The book says to allow yourself a maximum of two skips for a task before having to make yourself do it. Next you write out a card for each month that will include all of the special dates and information you might need such as birthdays, special days, things you have to do that month or holiday dates. If you're familiar with bullet journaling this is like the future log pages of your journal. And then the last card you need to write is a task called check dates to remember. We'll come back to this in a minute. Once you have done all of this then you are ready to start filing. So put your blank dividers at the back of the box. I haven't fully decided what I'm going to use these for yet but they are for things like projects, personal information, Christmas and things like that. In front of those put your monthly dividers with the month that you are currently in at the front and the rest of the months behind that in order. Then you put your daily dividers in front of those with the current date at the front and everything else filed behind that in order. Then it's just time to start filing the cards. The book says that you always file the card in front of the divider not behind it. So today is the 27th day of the month so I'm going to put the card in front of the 27 divider. Then you do this filing system for all of your cards. Always put them in front of the divider and not behind it. I mean if you prefer putting the divider behind then I can't see why not but the book is pretty adamant to do it this way so I'm just going to follow their expertise. So then all you have to do is put your daily cards in front of today's date and file all of the other cards on the day that you want to do that task while keeping in mind the weekly plan you made for yourself. I'm going to put my weekly plan on the inside lid of the box so that I have an easy reference guide. I'm also going to print out a mini calendar for every month of the year and I'm going to just stick that to my monthly divider for that month that's just so that I can see what date is what because that's the one drawback to this system if you aren't fully on top of what the date is then it can get a little bit confusing and I am one of those people who never knows what the date is so I tended to put the bigger weekly and monthly tasks on my heavy cleaning days and the rest on my lighter cleaning days and then I also organize the tasks together so that dusting different rooms gets done all together and things like vacuuming the same for any tasks that are seasonal, occasional, yearly, you put those tasks in the monthly dividers for the month that you want to do it. And then at the front of each month you put your special dates cards. Then the last card for you to file is the last one we made which is a reminder to check your monthly section. The book suggests putting this on the 25th of the month and make that the day you transfer all the monthly tasks into the daily section. Now I'm probably going to move this around a bit so that it always falls on a planning day for me because that seems like a logical day for me to do this. Now this is all starting to feel a little bit complicated but I'm sure once I start doing the system it will all fall into place. And I think that's it. The system is created so it's time to see if it works. If you want to see a progress video then do let me know in the comments and I'll update you on how it's going and whether or not this works. I'm actually going to keep the index card box in the coffee station area of my kitchen because it fits there without looking too strange and it is somewhere that both Blaze and I are guaranteed to see because we do not go a day without our coffee. I am really interested in other people's experience with a system like this or if anyone else has even done a system like this. So let me know your thoughts, I would love to hear them. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more then please do subscribe. All of your support this year has meant the absolute world to me and I absolutely love reading all of your thoughts and comments on things. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.